Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in one last time. Uh, again, I'm Elizabeth, Functional Medicine Certified Health Coach here at Vallejo Health and Wellness Center and this is Dr. Erin Moreland, the owner and a practitioner here at Vallejo. So we just wanted to take a few minutes today to wrap everything up because we know that they've probably spent a considerable amount of time so far watching these videos. So we just want to make sure that everything is solidified for you before we send you on. So. Dr. Aaron, can you just remind us why is it that we even put together this video series? Yep, absolutely. And uh, when we look at uh, Alzheimer's disease, we look at um, the um, the people that uh, are dealing with it, family members that are dealing with it, family members that are are worried about potentially getting it. Um, I think the message that is clear to most of them that's being presented today is that when you have Alzheimer's disease, there's just no hope. There's just not a lot that you can do about it. There's nothing right. you can do to reverse it. Uh, preventing it's gonna be almost impossible. And what we're seeing from the research, especially with Dr. Dale Bredesen's um, research with the recode model and such, that there is hope. And we are definitely seeing it in our office when we're working with people that are worried about it. So we've worked with a, a fair number of patients now mm -hmm. that are worried about it. They're doing things about it and we're seeing their numbers, their their cognition improve. They're seeing that their brains are working better and so we can see that there is hope. And again, our vision at Vallejo is that we would give hope to those people that have had that hope stripped away. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not trying to give false hope. If there right. wasn't something that people could do about it, we wouldn't tell them that there is, but we know that there is. So mm -hmm. that was the number one reason we wanted to make these videos, to help people to see that there is something that they can do about this. Absolutely. And so, you know, briefly mentioned this recode program. Um, could you share just, again, a really brief summary of what Recode is? Yeah, yeah. And again, Dr. Dale Bredesen, the guy that mm -hmm. developed it, the doctor that developed it, started as a neuroscientist, neuro researcher, um, just researching the brain, and then wanted to see how could he impact uh, Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. and found that he saw 36 different reasons why someone could develop Alzheimer's disease presented that to people that fund studies and nobody wanted to fund the study because there was 36 variables and when you do a study they want one variable and that's right, it. Right. And so he decided I'm going to go back to school, be a neurologist, start working with patients myself and see if I can help them. And over the course of that time he's worked with over a thousand patients, mm -hmm. seen 100% of them show some kind of improvement right. and then found that there really is even more than 36 different reasons why someone develop it. So the whole program is to look at uh, what type of Alzheimer's and we'll mm -hmm. get into that in a second, the different types. We've talked about that obviously in some of the other videos, but uh, there's different types of Alzheimer's and you look at the uh, uh, categorizing people that's helpful in helping them to, mm -hmm. to be able to help them in the long run to either slow it down to prevent it or to reverse it and then looking at uh, knowing what type of Alzheimer's it is then you can look to see what kind of interventions you can make mm -hmm. and that could be anywhere from diet changes to exercise to supplements and so the recode program is really looking at um, how do we determine what uh, type of Alzheimer's they, they, they have, and that's through different testing. Mm -hmm. If they have a certain type, what do we do about it? Like what kind of interventions can we make and how can we monitor and see that they are improving? So that's okay. truly what the recode program is. Yeah, it's just a much more individualized approach to everything too. Most definitely, you can't just look at all Alzheimer's patients being the same, mm -hmm. that they're all mm -hmm. due to these amyloid plaques and right. neurofibril tangles, so. Yeah, and I was actually going to say, you know, can we have a, a brief reminder, too, of what those amyloid plaques and neurofibril tangles are? Yeah, again, if you talk to people today about Alzheimer's disease, almost everybody believes that it's the neurofibrillary tangles or it's the um, amyloid plaques that's yeah. causing Alzheimer's. Yeah, but we're and finding out that's not the yeah, case. Yeah, we're finding that that's either a side effect or even a protective mechanism mm -hmm. of what's happening in the brain, and so if you... Um, try to remove them, they were finding, hey, we actually making the patients worse, so we know that that can't be the cause, but something's going on with those. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about that. They are present in some of the Alzheimer's disease, but a lot of times we're seeing that it can be to help protect the brain. 
from mm -hmm. from onslaught, from inflammation to toxins to um, over um, uh, being too much sugar in the brain. Those kind yeah. of things that the brain has to protect itself. Yeah. So you're kind of alluding to a couple different types of Alzheimer's right now. So, yeah, yeah. you know, instead of the amyloid plaques and the neurofibril tangles being the causes of things and just being more of a protection mechanism, let's kind of revisit these types of Alzheimer's quick because that's really more so indicative of what the causes might be for yeah, each person. Yeah, because once you know the, the, the um, different type, it definitely falls into a like, category. It tells mm -hmm. us, okay, well, what kind of things could be the culprit? Right. So type 1 was inflammation, mm -hmm. which um, a lot of different culprits when it comes to inflammation. We talked about it in great depth in the video that we did, but anywhere from the diet that we were eating to uh, things we're getting exposed to, right. uh, to how our body responds to those things. So that can be inflammation. Type mm -hmm. 2 or as Dr. Bredesen uh, calls it, type one and a half, um, that would be like that sugar, the um, poor ability to process sugar in the in the brain, yeah. and so um, almost like a type three um, uh, diabetes is what they uh, yeah. another way we referenced it. And then the third one is people dealing with like trophic factors. They don't have enough of a hormone. They don't mm -hmm. have enough of something that's going uh, to help their brain work the way it's supposed to. And then we have toxins. Toxins again. If a person has a toxic uh, uh, type of Alzheimer's, then it's removing toxins out of their body, out of their environment. Um, that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. And then the other ones, the other two, were vascular and trauma. So maybe a stroke um, caused that person to develop Alzheimer's disease or trauma, head traumas. And we talked extensively about how football players were seeing that in a lot of the NFL players. If that's a uh, um, early onset Alzheimer's is what mm -hmm. you're seeing and it's because of so many um, impacts to the brain. Right. So then when it comes to the solution, you know, it's very much based on that person and what type of Alzheimer's they're they're displaying. Yeah. Yeah, you when you look at solutions to people, um, we can't just take these protocols. The, right. The, the protocols do not work. If everybody was the exact same, a protocol could work, but uh, there's genetics that make us up, there's the bacteria that live on our body, there's um, things that have happened to us, there's different, uh, lifestyles. different lifestyles, how, um, how we um, have lived our lives is going to make a huge impact, and so mm -hmm. each person does have to be treated individually. So if someone came in and they did just have we determine that, hey, this is due to inflammation. It's going to look different than another person that comes in that we determine, hey, this is due to inflammation. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it can be very different. And so when you look at the solution, uh, you can go back, watch the videos. You can see we give some uh, very general things that people can be doing. Mm -hmm. But we also look at uh, one part of the solution really does need to have, you need to have a good practitioner coming alongside you because if you don't, um, you don't want to wait until, hey, I'm wondering if this is actually preventing it, if that's your goal, right. um, and then find out, okay, what I was doing wasn't what I needed to be doing. So it really is important to have that practitioner that's uh, trained in this kind of work to come alongside and to help. But there is definitely a lot of things that people can still be doing on their own right. that can be helpful. Right. So that being said, you know, people have watched all of these videos, they've learned about the types of Alzheimer's, they've learned about some things that they can do, you know, diet and exercise wise, like in their own time. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the next steps? Where do we go from here? Yeah, so next step, if a person, again, it depends on each person, but mm -hmm. I would say it depends on what their goals are too. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to prevent, um, I would definitely, you could, they could start intervening with those things, those solutions that they could do on their own. Mm -hmm. Because not only do they help with Alzheimer's disease, we know that they also help with cancer, they help with right. heart disease, so it's a good thing to start with that right away. But mm -hmm. I'd also, if I'm trying to prevent it, I'd also go in to a doctor that's trained in the recode. Um, we are obviously trained in it. There's mm -hmm. a website uh, that we'll put a link to that people can go to, find a practitioner if they're not in our area. They can okay. definitely go and find a practitioner in their area that's trained in it. And so uh, Dr. Bredesen calls it going into the practitioner and having a cognoscopy. Okay. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, so we think of uh, okay. a colonoscopy, right? right? Like it's a it's a camera. It's a it's a, a look into how uh -huh. um, the colon's working. Um, this is looking at how the brain's working. And, and it sounds much less invasive. It's very much less invasive, <laughs> absolutely. You don't have to do anything for two days to prior to okay. get ready for awesome. it. <laughs> but um, but it really is a, a great to, approach to finding out where your baseline is at. Okay, so okay. maybe you don't have any symptoms, but you just want to know. 
we can mm -hmm. see things in tests way before people can have symptoms. Okay, okay wow. Yeah, just like uh, a colonoscopy, you can see things that you wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to see mm -hmm. otherwise. So that's if someone's looking to prevent. If someone's looking, hey, I have this, I need to slow it down, I would definitely start again intervening, but I think it's really important that they start with a doctor. Okay, mm -hmm. and the reason why is because you need to know what interventions are good. And there are some times when you start using interventions that we know are good for prevention that you may not want to be doing depending on what type of, um, okay. of uh, Alzheimer's you have. So I think it's good to start with the practitioner yeah. there rather than just jumping right in. Very further. much so a test, don't guess sort of. Exactly, yep, because you do want to be focused on what really needs to be done mm -hmm. to intervene. Right. Then the final one, the people that are looking to um, reverse it, um, they're um, already been given a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. More than likely, it's going to have to be a family member that comes alongside them, but again, bringing them to a practitioner that can do the full testing, that mm -hmm. can get a good idea of where they're at, and then be able to monitor and see how they're improving, making sure that they're um, seeing the results that we want to see. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't want to take people down interventions that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, or like I said in, in the previous one, is they could potentially even make a person worse if you don't know what you're doing. So, mm -hmm. again, really important that you have a, a practitioner to come alongside. And then, once you know and are guided and directed, a lot of times in those last two, so a person that's looking to either slow it down or reverse it, mm -hmm. I think it's really important that they have someone like yourself, a health coach, to come alongside them. They don't necessarily need to keep seeing the doctor on a regular basis because right. they know where they're at mm -hmm. and they have a game plan on where they need to go, but a lot of times it's not an easy path. It's, right, uh, making those changes can be really difficult. Yeah, so it, it could seem simple, but it's not easy. And right, And it could yeah. be like, hey, you just gotta clean up your diet. Well, someone, that, especially someone that's already full-blown Alzheimer's has been eating this way for 60, 70, 80 years, yeah. telling them, hey, you can't have toast for, um, with your breakfast anymore, and they don't understand why that is, that's not going to be an easy right. um, task. So having yeah. someone like yourself that can come along, um, uh, that, that family member or the individual that's dealing mm -hmm. with it, um, coming alongside them to help is super important too. Yeah, okay, awesome. Well, thank you everyone again for tuning in, for taking the time to watch the videos that we've put out. Um, like Dr. Aaron said, we'll make sure to put a link um, somewhere in the video, below the video, to make sure that if you're not in the area, you're unable to contact Vallejo, that you can look and see what other practitioners are in your area. Because we just want to make sure that, you know, everyone has access to, to someone, that everyone can have mm -hmm. this hope. So yeah, yep. if there's anything else you'd like to share before we yeah, sign no, off. Yeah, no, I think the way to finish is, again, how we started. It's to talk about that hope. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, You've been in nursing homes when you're dealing with a family member that was uh, yeah. that was robbed of their last years of life because of this, um, this serious disease. And you see it, and you see these people, what they have to go through, and it's, it's just hard to see. So... And again, people just don't have hope that they could do anything, and there is hope. I just mm -hmm. can't stress that enough that uh, that we can help and we can um, come alongside people and help them to to be healthy. So, I would recommend if you've watched the videos, I would go back and watch them again. There's just a ton of information in those videos. We're going to be constantly putting out more information. So, I'd highly recommend if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel that you definitely subscribe to it because we want to continue to put out the latest research, the latest interventions, new interventions, things that uh, maybe you missed when you watched the video. They may be here in the mm -hmm. video, but um, we're going to put uh, constantly putting out new videos to, to help people that are dealing with this. So I'd recommend subscribing if you know somebody that's dealing with this or you have a uh, friend or a family member or someone, a coworker that you know that's worried about this, share this with them. Yes. This is a message that needs to get out there. We're not doing it so uh, for just for our office. We're doing it to help people, uh, not just in our area, but across All the country, over. across the world, because right. this is a disease, I think they say by 2050, it's gonna be just rampant in our society. And if we don't do something now, that's the path we're going down in. So it has, something's gotta change. Right, absolutely. And that's interesting, like, you know, 2050, that's 30 years from now. Like, whether it's 
our generation, our children's generation, like people that we love are going to be so impacted mm -hmm. by that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to so. see my grandkids have to deal with this disease. I know, me neither. So, yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Be well and God bless. Yes, God bless you.